Rich, our first conversation since your return as manager of the club. Firstly, what's your thoughts on your pre-season campaign? Uh, it's been good fun so far. Yeah, uh, been a lot of fun, been a lot of hard work put in by everybody. Uh, but yeah, uh, good good fun. Got a really a brilliant staff group uh, this, this season and they've yeah helped to make it a really good environment whereby you know i've been working hard but having yeah having a good time doing it well let's talk off the field first in terms of your backroom staff you've been busy with recruitment of a new assistant manager in nathan ellis you brought in coaches andrew robinson and kieran beasley who joined yourself and dave tomlinson as existing coaches so tell me a little bit about the thoughts of bringing those people in uh, just really about establishing really good uh, sort of foundations and making sure that sort of the quality of the coaching that we've got here this year is second to none. And uh, I'm pretty confident that you know we've done that. Nathan's you know fantastic, a licensed coach, is a coach developer, and that's helped us as well with our kind of recruitment of uh, you know of coaches. So it's really really important that you know things like that that we can improve the players that are here, and that we can provide an environment whereby the players that you know the good experienced players are still like learning and being pushed, and uh, yeah, and Nathan's good fun too. So. Going back to pre-season, your side tested themselves against other Tier 4 sides, but as well as Tier 3 and Tier 5 competitions. So what have you learned about your group from your pre-season? Well, there's just so much so much to do. That's the thing. It seems to have uh, you know, flown by. Initially, you're looking at you know, players, potential players, uh, and uh, at the same time, you, you, you know, you're trying to obviously establish some uh, you know, patterns of play and the way that you want to play. So uh, you know it's it's uh, it, it's it's difficult to sort of do both of you know both of those things, and at the same time you kind of we've got a fair number of new players in, so you're trying to build those sort of relationships, uh, and then also get people to start building some match fitness and get back up to you know get back up to speed. So yeah, lots of aspects. I think it's been uh, successful. You know, not everything's gone perfectly, which I think like is is good because that prepares us for. Uh, for the season where everything won't go you know perfectly and it's in sort of those moments where perhaps you learn a little bit more about your group um, so yeah no I've been been positive seems to have flown by there before we talk about your summer recruits you've been fairly busy in in retaining some of your players that you had last season as well it's been obviously difficult roads to recovery for both Grace Pennell and Steph Bent who have both committed to your side for the upcoming season two full backs with not only great energy for the changing room but versatility as well yeah, they're two uh, really versatile players actually. But they're, you know, you have to. If you talk about Steph and Grace, you're just talking about really great people, and uh, you know the work and the resilience and the tenacity that they've sort of shown. Sort of Steph's recovery has been, uh, you know, anything uh, but you know easy. She's had, you know, a number of kind of setbacks uh, on the road to that, and yet you know she comes and makes sure she's like really really positive. And I think she's just brought everybody along with her. Uh, Grace is a young player that sort of matured. Like right in front of our eyes, with the you know difficulties, you know it's a uh, sort of dislocated ankle and a double fracture, um, so a really serious injury, and uh, yeah, she's just equipped herself really, really well. And again, you know, she's somebody that uh, everybody just really respects and can see how she's matured. Um, and yeah, she's you know it, it, at times it can be quite emotional to see a kid kind of uh, you know getting back into contact training, scoring goals. Um, she's still got a little way to go. We need to be careful not to, you know, to, not to rush both of them. Really, they need the time. They're obviously, really excited and they really want to get going, but they do need the time to kind of get themselves fully back up to speed with their football and their fitness and everything, so that they can contribute in the way that they definitely, you know, they definitely can. They're, they're both great characters and, um, yeah, the type of people that. Um, you know, would reflect my values and like what I want from players in a team. So, yeah, it's it's good for us. It's, it's like two bonus signings in a way. Eight departures since you finished last season, but also eight summer recruits that you've brought in. Before we touch specifically on your recruitment, it's fair to see that a bit of your pro approach has been in young players and also a blend of experience, but some players that know this level as well. Yeah, I think it's obviously it's exciting with young players because of all of their potential. Um, but you also need players like Sahara that have been there, seen it, you know, and, and done it, just because of uh, you know what they can bring for those young players and the consistency that you get with those type of players. So, uh, yeah, you're right. We've we've got some good young players, some exciting uh, you know talents and prospects, some players that are sort of ready really to kind of kick on. 
um, but also in, in the likes of Sahara and, and Hannah, we've we've just brought class and experience, um, which will be yeah be vital for us. And and you know they've shown that in the way they've behaved, you know, and conducted themselves in sort of pre-season. They're really great. They're really really great people, and uh, they sort of belie the level of experience they've got. They're you know humble, hardworking, great people. Let's look at your summer recruits and starting with the addition of experience in bringing in ex-women's championship goalkeeper Hannah Cox that you've already mentioned. She arrives from Abingdon Town, but a goalkeeper who strengthens your goalkeeper department alongside Shauna Hannam and Emily McGrogan. Yeah, I mean, what a, what a goalkeeping department we've got. You know, it's 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 full of quality. Uh, I think uh, it's good for Emily to have really serious competition, but also, uh, you know, a really experienced player that she can kind of, you know, learn from. Um, and that will that will help her development. But Hannah is somebody that, you know, in my opinion, if she was playing at a perhaps more uh, prestigious, uh, I mean, no disrespect to Abingdon, but a, a more you know known club, uh, you know, she's an excellent goalkeeper. She's a really you know really good goalkeeper, and uh, yeah, she's um, of a of a really high standard. Again, conducted herself you know brilliantly. So pleased to have her in. You started your summer recruitment with the addition of Sahara Osborne Ricketts, someone that you mentioned brings in a vast amount of experience, as well as the captures of young Caitlin Moore and Libby Whalen, a fresh new look for your back line. Yeah, well, we, we've uh, part of the yeah, situation that we had with players kind of leaving is that a lot of our back line went, so that, that needed to be replaced. It's important to bring um, some experience and quality uh, in. And the great thing with Sahara is she committed to us early, um, you know, believes in the project, understands what's going on. I think even though, you know, Sahara's in the latter part of her career, uh, I think her football, uh, you know, she's a coach, she's a UFB coach, so uh, I would like to see her staying here in the longer term as well from a, you know, from a coaching perspective and being part of the backroom staff. She's, um, you know, she's excellent. And then Caitlin was uh, somebody that uh, came to our open trial and it was somebody that I wasn't actually aware of and she's a standout uh, there so you know she's an excellent prospect um, and uh, yeah Libby's just uh, again somebody that's come through from Bristol City loads of quality on the ball really great person really wants to be here um, so I think in the circumstances we've done like we've done really really well. One new face in midfield with the capture of former Cheltenham Town midfielder Jessica Smith, a young player familiar with Swindon from her time with a centre of excellence. Yeah, just uh, like you say, she's somebody that understands the values of the club. She understands what the badge means to you know to supporters, and she's come through. For, so for for me, this should be her natural home. Uh, she is still a young player, a developing player, uh, but it's been really clear in pre-season that she's at that stage where she needs to start getting. Uh, you know some exposure to uh, to this level of sen senior football. Um, you know when I've looked at footage and looked at her sort of closely, she's doing well. Um, so yeah, it's a tough challenge for her because she's got you know serious senior competition, uh, but she gives us some some depth. And like I say, it's it's nice to have one of her own in. You captured Poppy Dearlove, a young attacking footballer formerly of Oxford United. What can you tell us about her? What a, what a great young player! Uh, you know, she's she's done brilliant pre-season. Um, this is somebody that I knew about because uh, I've, I've got some connections uh, at, at Oxford. Um, but the thing that's impressed me most about Poppy has just been the quality of her communication and uh, the way she's conducted herself. Has been been brilliant. She's yeah, she's done very very well. Again, we have to be careful. She's a you know she's a young player. Uh, but, you know, she's won the lot at Oxford Development and, uh, yeah, she's handling herself really, really well. And then finally, on the uh, addition of two goal scorers, and I say goal scorers because both of these uh, girls that you signed are uh, prolific in their uh, forward line. So you must have one of the most deadly strike forces heading into the upcoming campaign, having signed Tory St. Clair and Libby Davis, who are joined Annie Colston. Yeah, really pleasing because, obviously, in my opinion, you know, we've got the best striker in the league uh, in, in, in Annie. And uh, obviously, we don't want to kind of just be leaning on Annie all of the time, and we need to make sure that there's you know competition and also support uh, you know for Annie. Uh, Libby is somebody that I know from my time at, at Cheltenham, and uh, yeah, I'm absolutely delighted to get Libby in. She's been she's been great, and uh, I tried to get her in uh, sort of before, but the timing's just been right. So that's uh, that's really good. And then Tori's uh, somebody that. Uh, 18, you know, has scored last season, I think 13 uh, league goals and 20 goals for Actonians. 
and there are not many 18 year olds that are kind of doing that um, she is still a young player that needs to you know develop uh, but she's an exciting sort of you know raw talent um, she's got a bit of an injury at the moment which uh, needs to be worked on but yeah again really different profile to Annie uh, and, and Libby as well and so you know along with Mia uh, it, it gives us a really balanced front line that uh, yes yeah, th th they could all play with each other actually that's that's the exciting thing um, so yeah yeah uh, I think two really good strong signings for us not just for now but for you know going forwards. Some fantastic summer recruitment for your side and I suppose more than likely sele selecting your club captain for the upco upcoming campaign can never be an easy decision but you've gone with someone who displays incredible leadership on and off the field. What can you tell us about selecting Annie Colson as your captain? Uh, easy choice really. As I think she epitomises all of my values. Uh, she epitomises the values of the club. She loves the club. We're really lucky to have her commitment. You know, she's had a lot of offers uh, in the summer, but she likes being here. She, she absolutely, like you say, epitomises uh, the things that you want from a, from a captain. It's going to be great to see. It's an opportunity for her to develop herself off of the pitch uh, as, as well. But she is one of those people that leads by example and uh, wants what's best for the club. She's kind of kind, unselfish. So the girls, all, all of the team, you know, the staff as well, they, you know, respect her. Uh, so in some respects, it's an obvious choice. But we've, we've got some people that, even though they're not going to have the title of a captain or a leadership, I'd expect them to, and they will step up and lead. We've got experienced people here that will do that too. We've spoken a lot about pre-season and obviously your summer recruitment and you've selected your club captain now, which means we must be getting ever closer to the start of the season. Keensham first up for your side, a trip to Bristol awaits. So what do you know about them and how have preparations been ahead of your opening fixture? Yeah, Keensham are always an, uh, an awkward team to play against. Uh, we know that in Naomi Clipston they've got an excellent striker that's always going to be a threat. And uh, they've also got you know, some experienced players uh, uh, as well. Uh, I'm not sure. Obviously, we don't get as much uh, information early on in the season as far as footage, etc., about how you know how they're going to set up and how they're going to play. But you always have to be honest against uh, Kinsham, and they'll always pose a threat. And and last season they were they were a good side that did exactly that. So I think we will have to be on our game, and we'll have to sort of execute what we've been working on uh, well to make sure that we can get the result. Uh, you know, at the start of the season, which is obviously what we're excited to try and go and do and produce. A long chat, obviously, your first game on Sunday, but just lastly, your first four home games have been confirmed and announced for the Nigel Eadie County Ground. That must give yourself and the team great momentum and pride to be able to play in front of the fans out there. Yeah, love it. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Everybody's excited. This, you know, this time of year, uh, they're doing all of their media. Everything's getting set up. Uh, the, we've got, you know, the players have got their names on their shirts for the first time this year. They're really excited about that, being able to get out onto the county ground and all, all of the off-field developments that, you know, people like Mandy, uh, yourself, and other people have been working so hard on. It, it just helps build a level of excitement, helps give them the environment that they, you know, deserve. And uh, you know, I, th I think the club are doing an absolutely fantastic job to promote and support the women's team. And part of that is that they get the opportunity to kind of go out and do that in a great stage in front of you know supporters and like, just urge people to come and you know support them, support the team. <laughs>